So Lynn, my question for you is, when we are talking about this, uh, the horse and you are sitting the saddle back, um, most of the time when we are riding this horse, our saddles are more, um, more forward. But if we slid it back, then we get an angle of the saddle that's pinching right here. So, so you want to know how to fix that? Yes, I do. Okay. Problem being, as I said earlier with that tree, they have to use their saddle up here. It's the lesser of two evils. If they move it back here, it dives into the shoulder, pinches severely. And Joe wants to know, how do we move it back where we should, where saddles were used for many hundreds or even thousands of years? They go back to six or 700 AD, the McClellan. How do you move it back, free up the shoulder, and not bite into it? Yes. I will go get a corrector shield. I'll get the corrector pad. I'll get some balance shims. I'll show you the basics of how we do it. To try to answer your question here and fix this problem. This is the corrector. That's the first device after Orthoflex that I sit down and design to work and not lessen the contact from the rider to the horse like Orthoflex panel system did under a tree and to spread the pressures out over a large area to stop the pinching that happens under the saddle tree and also to protect the loin. So in this, let me show you what's actually inside here. The newer protector version, this is all made, these shields right here are all made into a pad. And this lies right here. And you can see that it is molded to the shape of a horse and works surprisingly well in shaping basically to any horse. So what this is doing when you put the saddle tree on, I put a mark that says front of tree bar here. And I put that mark on the pad. So I've made these slots to where they all line up right through here and they get larger as they go in. So we have a soft spot in here. As the horse bends and turns, he no longer runs into the bar of the tree when it's placed behind the shoulder. He bends this shield, and that shield pushes back against that tree. It's a flexible lever. It makes your saddle ride back of the shoulder. Still have one problem. You can pinch through anything if you ride downhill all day long. <laughs> so with that problem, being recognized, you use balance shims. The balance shims go on top of this shield, just like this. Okay, they stair step as you add them. You're gonna add them to both sides. When you add these three layers, quarter inch each, you will lift the saddle up on the other side as well, by using it as well. So it raises the saddle an inch and a quarter even though it's only three quarters inch thick because you have added it to both sides. This picks the saddle back up, keeps it from setting down, and it, I try to alleviate the pinching here by dropping it down and away there as well. So we're lifting and we get a lot of contact down here that we didn't have before, whereas we get a little gap up here whereas we didn't have it before. So that's to try to lift, to balance the rider without pinching. This is the problem as a riding instructor, and you've got a barn. And I go to English stables, and I watch my daughter for 30 minutes of a 45 minute lesson. She's warming this horse up. This horse is too sore to be ridden until it's been ridden for 30 minutes. The horse is then warmed up, and then she has 15 minutes of lesson. Yet the lady wants to be paid for 45. So if you stop soaring in the horse and you have 45 minute lesson, you get your whole 45 minutes worth. <laughs> but that's the basic corrector, protector system is the shield.
put this back up here the way I used it for many years, and you'll see how it's positioned and held together. And I'll put the tree back on here. And I have rear shims as well. And the reason for using rear shims is you have a little horse over here that will need them, or a very straight-backed horse without much drop that will need the rear shims where you lose that contact on this saddle tree or your saddle tree. Back here, when the back's up, you put the rear shim in, you pick up the contact. So here we are with a basic corrector system and we're spreading the weight out. We're gonna get a hold of the horse better. No longer does this pinch at all, yet we haven't lifted the saddle up except in the front in this situation. If I put it on both sides, it'll lift it a little more. It'll stop your pinch right here. It'll pick up your contact right here. It holds your saddle where it should be because the horse is body bending, shoulders rotating, continually doing this. It scoots the saddle back out of the way of the shoulder movement. Therefore, you have to pick it back up with some balance shims. The extra twist you see in my bars, just take less balance shims because we already have something holding the saddle up in front and it's down here. We're not compensating as much, in other words. So that is how you fix. How do you keep it from, you said it shifts it back. How uh -huh. do you keep it from just keep from sliding on back? Is that where the, just the grip comes in and helps It'll, hold it? It really doesn't slide on back because most horses have a downhill slant anyway, even when they pick their back up. You'll notice that this opening here, as the back comes up, this opens. This is a part of the patent. It's an elliptical cut here. So when the back is down, this closes. It drops for the horse. As the horse bends and turns, it opens on the outside of the turn. Keeps it from being scooted around. It's one of the problems with saddle pad. They always want to scoot out, don't they? Okay, so the cut of this lets it move with a horse. That's why it's patent protected on just the cut as well as all the rest of the features. But, good question. How do you keep it from just going on out the back? I'll tell you the main how and that is, this shield here is the shape of the horse. It's moving with the horse as he moves, and it's caught. So I have three-day eventers that do high-speed jumping out on the courses that don't have to tie their pad to their saddle anymore. They're using a protector pad because this shield is caught between upward bending forces and the downward pressure. It can't go anywhere. It doesn't scoot out the back. Surprisingly enough, the only problem we have with the pad scooting is the horse starts to round his back a lot more, riding at a trot a lot, or cantering, and the pad will scoot forward because you lose your contact up here. And the contact is in the middle of the back. So when a pad scoots forward, we put the rear balance shims in, along with a couple of front balance shims, give him room to bring his back up. We put even pressure back on the front balance, on the front shields, and the pad no longer scoots out front. <laughs> I've only done this a few thousand times, but that's a good question. 